was contacted by Anja from Papier und Stift. Uh, I'm pretty sure I met her once. Didn't we meet? In Nuremberg, I think. Insights X. Years ago, before the plague. Before the dark times. Anyway, uh, she said, I have an interesting pen. I would like you to check out. Uh, this is designed by Herr Pflug. Now, who is Herr Pflug? Herr Pflug was the German distributor for Caveco. And then he's, he retired and he kind of made himself retirement present. Now, that's pretty much the most awesome thing I ever heard because you distribute pens and then for your retirement, you design your own pen. This is the pen and I'm very impressed by this pen for a couple of reasons. And I am very excited to share it with you. Now, along with this, so this the, the brand is uh, Calamus, right? As in a, an old pen, Calamus. Like that they, that, anyway, the, the, the old, old pen, history, look it up, Calamus. Um, she also sent me the ballpoint and the roller ball. Now, those I will review in one video because I think it makes sense to combine those two. But the fountain pen, given that this is predominantly by far a fountain pen channel, I first wanted to review the fountain pen separately. So that's what I'm going to do next. And then in a future episode, you will see the ballpoint and the roller ball, which are not exactly matching. I can do a quick uh, uh, sneak peek. Uh, as you can see, all three are designed quite differently, a similar style. But it's not that the rollerball is the fountain pen, but just with a rollerball tip instead of a nib. It's actually a completely different design, which I thought was very cool. So anyway, that's coming up in the future. For now, let's look at the parts of this pen. Let's do a writing sample. And let me tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get the show on the road. So here we go with this Calamus uh, fountain pen. It comes in a little cardboard tube, which I like a lot, minimalistic packaging that you can just recycle. And then in there is this little booklet, which just has some filling instructions for the three writing modes. Okay, what do we have? We have the fountain pen, and then we also have, again, ballpoint and roller ball. I'll do these two in one separate video. But for now, here we have this pen. Let me zoom in a bit. Here is this pen next to a Pilot Metropolitan. You see it's about the same length, uh, just a little bit skinnier. Really not that much. Let's cover the parts here. So just in general, it's a black brass, sorry, it's a, a brass pen with a black uh, chrome covering on it. Uh, it has a roll stopper, which I think is nice because there's no clip and there's no option for a clip but it's a roll stopper and clearly that didn't do its work there, but that's because this surface is actually curved. Were I to put this on a flat surface like this book, uh, I think it does a pretty good job in, in keeping the pen uh, stationary. I mean, it's a roll stopper, right? It, it, it will still roll, but it, it, it does a pretty decent job. 59.90 euros is the price for this. Uh, and again, it's the German distributor of Caveco. Uh, Herr Pflug, who retired and basically uh, designed and made these pens. You can get the pen in a medium, sorry, a fine medium or broad nib, they're steel, and the, uh, the fountain pens come with a converter. Okay, let's look at the parts of the pen. So the top of the cap, uh, just solid metal part. Then you have that roll stopper. You have two grooves here, and then three on the barrel. Um, that cap is actually quite flush with the uh, with the barrel, but there is a, a groove in here as well. Going down, you have an ink window, which you may not see very clearly, but I try to put in a translucent ink so you can kind of see it. And then here we have a blind cap, a standard traditional blind cap with, in this case, not a piston, but a converter in there, which you can then uh, operate to fill the pen. I'm not going to do that now because it's completely full of ink. Uh, the cap pulls off, it's a snap cap, and there is no ability to post this. It doesn't post, but I have not had any issues with uh, using this pen. It has a tiny section, which as you can see, just tapers down, a black number five nib. It's a Schmidt nib, in this case broad, uh, and it has a, a plastic feed. Ink window. 
section that's basically barrel, right? You grab it in the barrel. I, I'm not able to really hold it at that section comfortably. Then I get a very steep angle to write with and also there's not a lot of space. And given that these grooves are here, I'm assuming that the design was such that you hold uh, those grooves. It could be a little bigger for me. It's kind of at the edge of what I can use comfortably uh, in, in length, comma, lack thereof, but I do find it a comfortable uh, pen. So why don't we write with it for a bit? I'll zoom out a bit and show you what we have. So here we have the Calamus. Uh, I'm just gonna put in FP for fountain pen. I don't believe it has a model name. Calamus is just the brand. Uh, this is a uh, broad steel nib and the ink is, sorry, Edelstein uh, Star Ruby Red, which I really enjoy. And for some reason, I really like that pen, sorry, that ink in black pens. I, I like that combination. Writing is pretty smooth. Now, this being a black nib, uh, typically what you see in those nibs is that the tipping is also coated and that gives a, a special kind of feedback if you've ever used a black nib like this and you may know exactly what I'm talking about. I wouldn't call it scratchy. I really don't find this a scratchy pen. It's just a bit of feedback uh, as, you, as you write. A bit of fast writing. And the feed keeps up really quite well. I've not had any issues with uh, this pen running dry as you write. Neither super wet nor super dry, just a well-tuned nib and feed in my mind. A pretty round nib, um, and as to line variation, not a flex nib, but you, you could squeeze out some line variation. I wouldn't recommend it, but theoretically you could. And the final uh, test is reverse writing. It becomes scratchier, and as you can see, it's very dry. So I wouldn't buy this if you really like to do reverse writing. Of course, if you want a finer nib, you could also just purchase the fine nib. All right, let's talk about likes and dislikes. Let's get in on that. What do I like? What do I not like about the Calamus, Calamus, Calamos? Pronounce it any way you'd like. Fountain pen. Um, there's a couple of things I really like. When I unpacked it, I thought that's a little skinny for me. This is a personal thing, a little skinny. But I have to admit, it's comfortable. Given that it's brass, base, it's quite solid. And as a result, it's, I found it comfortable. Um, mainly because of that weight. Yes, it's a bit skinny, but would it be girthier? It might become too heavy for some people. It's not a light pen, but I think most people would be able to use this. I like that it's all black. It's fun. It's a real stealth pen with a stealth nib. I like that theme. This eye for detail. These little ribs. The logo that I, uh, you, you, you may not be able to see fully, but it's, it's engraved there. There's a roll stopper. Small detail, but a, a detail that matters. This will not roll off your desk. There's an ink window. I put in a, an, a, a what do you call that? Not a clear ink, but a, is it a transparent ink? No, a translucent ink. An ink you can look through. So if I hold this up against the light, you, you, you can't see that. You don't get that benefit because the light's there. Tough luck. Um, I can look through it, but I can see merely how much ink is in there. And I think you can see it a bit too, right? So that's eye for detail as well. You can see how much ink you have left, ink window. Um, nice design, right, with the blind cap at the end. Here's my favorite thing about this. It's original. I see so many pens come out these days that all are variations on a theme. Think of all the Limey Safaris, all the Sailor 1911s, all as a, it's all variations on a theme, and that's okay. It makes them very collectible, and some people love that. But I also like seeing something original once in a while, something completely different. And this, I have to say, is something I have not seen before. There are some shades of certain Cabeco pens that are kind of slim, but 
with the roll stopper, the specific design, with the blind cap, with the ink window, I just haven't seen before. I think it's a solid pen. Now, other things I don't like about it, of course, there always are things. The tiny little dinky section that you can't actually hold, I mean, I, I can't really hold that comfortably. It's very small. Maybe if you have really thin fingers that work a little bit better, but I, I'm also not sure how, to what degree you're really supposed to hold it there. I think you're supposed to hold it there where those grippy rings are. Having said that, this is at the edge of what I can use, right? Would it be any shorter? It would slip into my hand like this and I wouldn't be able to use it. But it doesn't slip into my hand like that. It might have been nice if I'd be able to pose this. And for a second I had the hope of maybe you can unscrew the blind cap and then screw in the cap. I think that would be pretty cool as a feature, but, but you can't. So this was completely useless. Um, I don't need to post it. So I think for most people this will be a comfortable size to use. I think it's very nice. And an original design like this, I think it's pretty cool. Now for me the best thing is the price. 59.90 euros. And if you were to order from overseas without, like out of Europe, out from outside, out of Europe, from outside of Europe, you wouldn't pay that. It would be even more affordable. It becomes pretty uh, interesting. And I mean, I know that there are cheaper pens out there because there always are, but this is a quality product. I do find it's, it's made very nicely. The tolerances are great. Uh, everything works very well. When I unpacked this and I was looking at it, I thought I was estimating something like 110, 120 euros. Now that maybe that's just me, but I mean, thinking I, I have held a pen or two. That's kind of what I was expecting, but I think this price is incredibly fair. So I think it's a very nice product. So uh, Herr Pflug, haben Sie gut gemacht. Um, Anja, thank you so much for sending me the pen pens actually, because again, Ballpoint or Rollerball will follow at a later date. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.